Yo everybody, it's your boy the Tatemeister here. Um, so yeah, here we are. Joker, folly ado. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to keep this video as brief as I possibly can because I really don't want to spend too much time on this movie. I mean, you've already heard people's reviews on it and everything. I mean, I don't really think I have much to add to this discussion. Now, I'll start off by saying I didn't hate the movie. Like, I'm not one of those people that think this is the worst movie of the year, because, no, it's not. Like, there was, there was worse movies, including Megalopolis, which I, was a straight-out bad movie. I'm not going to touch, touch Megalopolis, I'm not going to review Megalopolis, but yeah, I saw that one. And yeah, that wasn't a good movie, so. Um, by the way, if you didn't know, if you haven't seen my Joker 1 review, I gave that movie a 10 out of 10. Joker 1 is one of my, my favorite movies of all time. Like, it's also one of my... My favorite con it's just, it's a remarkable movie, like, from acting, from directing, Todd Phillips and the team just went hard. And, to say, I was always skeptical about this sequel, like, I knew the first movie didn't need a sequel, and that it just, there was no point of making a sequel, it just didn't make sense. And then it was announced it was going to be a musical, which I'm like, okay, how's that going to work? Like, a musical sequel to the gritty, dark First movie, like, how's this gonna work? And then it was announced Lady Gaga was gonna play Harley Quinn, and I'm like, okay, but I mean, that's a pretty cool casting decision. I will say up front, she's not in this movie as much as advertised. Like, she's in the movie, don't get me wrong, she has her moments, but like, I mean, it's it's focused on Arthur just like the first movie. It's it's Arthur's in the movie, like, 99% of the time. I mean, like, yeah, Harley's not in the movie as much as they were marketing it to be, but like, she's good in the movie. Like, when she's in the movie, she's good. I, uh, I don't know. I'll give it my positives for this. I'll say, I'm very much in the middle of this movie. I don't have a giant strong opinion on it. I'm very much in the middle. I don't think it's the worst sequel of all time, but I don't think it's great either. I'll give my positives out of the way first for Joker 2, Joker Folly Ado. Um, the reacting, the directing, the pacing, the way the movie is constructed, it's pretty well done. I mean, I can admit, especially the musical numbers, like, I thought the musical numbers were gonna be weird. But, like, there's one scene in particular where it was really good. Like, I was jamming to the music. Like, yeah, they were having a good time. Like, clearly Todd Phillips and the team had a good time making this. Like, Hilder, Gro Hilder I forget her last name, but the composer, Hilder, she did a great job, just like the first movie. Like, obviously it's not going to be as good as her first movie score. If you didn't know Joker 1 won, won Best Oscar for Best Original Score, rightfully so. I mean, Hilder went hard on that. Like, that was one of the best music of all time. And same with, same with Walking Phoenix winning Best Actor. Like, yeah, he was he performed amazingly well in it. And both of our stay true here. Joker 2, Joaquin and Hilder still went hard. I mean, everybody went hard. Um, again, I think it's really going to divide people, and I, I can see why this movie's getting so much hate. It's because of the story. Like, you're either going to love this story, or you're going to hate it. Like, the way Todd Phillips wrote the story is not traditional, in any sense. Like... And again, it's either hit or miss. For me, it was a mix of... It was just a mixed bag. Like, especially the ending. Like, again, the ending's gonna probably turn off a lot of people. It's funny because I kind of predicted how it was gonna end. It's funny that my prediction came true. But, like, yeah. I can see why people are very mixed on the movie. Like, I mean, again, Joker 2 just kind of proved that it didn't need to exist. Like, Joker 1 was fine as a standalone origin story that just... There was no need for a sequel. Like, this movie just kind of proved the point. Like, yeah, it didn't need to exist at all. Like, clearly Todd and the team just... Todd Phillips and his team didn't know what to do here. They're just like, okay, I guess we're making a Joker sequel. Uh, we'll just throw in some musical numbers, some courtroom drama, and some uh, romance, I guess. Uh, just put it all in a, in a blender and just, all right, we got a movie. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Todd and the team just didn't know what to do. So they're like, all right, just, just throw shit at the wall. Just throw darts at the wall. I don't know. Shit. Uh, that, that's, that's good. Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's clear when you're watching the movie that Todd really didn't know what to do here. And yeah, I mean, you... Yeah, it, it's clear in the final product. It's it's even more insane, because apparently, um, they didn't even test screen this movie. <laughs> Which is just nuts to me. Like, bro, like, I guess the, they didn't want... They, they, they wanted to avoid the backlash that the Batgirl test screenings got, because they canceled the movie. But, like, bro, like... You have to test screen movies, I'm sorry, but, like, just because Batgirl had bad test screenings doesn't mean you shouldn't test screen Joker. Like, what? I don't know, bro, like... Yeah, I just found that insane. I feel like test screenings would have improved the plot immensely. Like, they probably would have been able to fix a lot of the plot issues. But, like, 
as it stands, like, again, there's some good plot, there's some good story elements and moments in this movie. Like, there's a couple courtroom scenes I thought were pretty good, and a couple, you know, again, the musical numbers, when they happen, some of them were really creative. But, like, as a narrative, it's just a narrative mess. Like, the, the plot and writing really need to work. Like, <laughs> again, it's visually sh well shot. Like, and there's a lot of well-made elements in this movie. It's just, like, comparing to that, that simple, straightforward, you know, fans of the first movie, I guess, are going to be, like, very turned off from this. Like, they're not going to, you know, appreciate it. Like, I can appreciate what Todd was trying to do here. Like, he was trying to do something different than the first movie. Because a lot of people's criticisms of the first movie is, oh, it's just Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's inspired by those. They made it apparent. They even said that in the Wikipedia page, guys. Like, yeah, they were inspired from Taxi Driver and King of Comedy. Like, why does everybody complain about that? Like, obviously, yeah, they don't try to hide that. Like, bro. <laughs> but, like, either way, I think it blended those two movies together well. I haven't seen King of Comedy yet, but I have seen Taxi Driver. And while that comparison is fair, I, I don't really understand it, because clearly it's the reverse of Taxi Driver, where instead of the, the bad guy becoming the hero, it's the hero becoming the bad guy. I mean, it's kind of the reverse. So I, I don't really understand that comparison too much, but... Um, Anyway, yeah, Joker was a very straightforward origin story about, you know, rising up to, against society. This movie is just an ep aftermath epilogue that just doesn't add anything. Like, it just kind of... Again, I understand the criticism of this movie, I also understand the praise. Like, again, I understand both sides of this movie. You know, both the haters and the fans of this sequel. You know, I I'm in the middle, so I'm kind of the middle man, where I'm just like, okay, I agree with you, but I also agree with you. You know... <laughs> I'm very much the middleman of this debate, guys. Like, Joker 2 is a mixed bag, for sure. Like, again, maybe you'll love it more than me. Maybe you'll hate it more than me. I'm in the middle. So, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I thought it was just fine. You know, I, I enjoyed the moments that were good, and I was confused about the moments that were bad. I was just kind of like, okay, that was a little ballsy of a decision, Todd Phillips. Uh, all right. <laughs> to, to put it in Rosenberg, uh, Rosenberg, Michael Rosenberg, I think I'm saying his name right, he's like, it's a bit rich, but okay. You know, essentially, that's how I feel about this movie. Like, it takes some swings, but when, again, when it when it hit the ball, it hit the ball hard. Like, the dance numbers are pretty cool. I like Lady Gaga. You know, like, all the actors do a good job. There's some really cool writing moments. You know, it's just the other things. Like, it's just... Yeah, I, uh... Not sure. Maybe on rewatches, I'll appreciate it more. Like, I will rewatch the movie just to analyze it more. Because it, it, I think it's more, like artsy and creative than Megalopolis was. Megalopolis was just a bad movie throughout. I, I don't see people that... I, it's hard to understand people that enjoy Megalopolis. I know I keep bringing Megalopolis back into this, but, like, yeah, no, Megalopolis is the worst movie. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> there's been worse movies this year. Like, Megalopolis and Cuckoo are just bad. Like, no, I don't think Joker 2 is bad at all. Like, it's fine enough. Like, people are exaggerating how bad it is. But, again, I don't call it great. And for that reason, I'm going to give the movie a 6 out of 10. Just straight up 6 out of 10. It is a downgrade to the first movie in every respect, obviously. I mean, it was going to be a downgrade no matter what. But again, I don't find it to be as horrible as the internet's making it out to be. Like, they're saying it's, like, the worst sequel of all time, which is just stupid. Like, bro, like, there's worse sequel, like, Blade Runner 2. Like, you already know my stance on Blade Runner 2. I think that movie's stupid. Uh, Jaws 2 is the worst movie. Uh, what's another one? Um, Speed 2, especially. Speed 2 is probably the worst sequel ever made. Like... I'd say Speed 2 and uh, uh, Son of the Mask. Speed 2 and Son of the Mask take the case for the worst sequel of all time. Like, this is not on the level of those two. But, like, I I'm just saying, guys, you know, like, it's it's fair enough. If you want a good time with some music numbers and Lady Gaga and Joaquin Phoenix, you're going to get it here. But if, if, you're, if, you, if you love the first movie, I can see why you might have an issue. Like, it, it, it does some risky things that I think a lot of people are going to notice. And they're going to be like, what the fuck, you know? I know people are not going to agree with the story, but for what it is, it's fine enough. It's not horrible, it's not great, it's just in the middle. And that's where I'm standing, in the middle. But anyway, guys, that's what if you a Joker fall you do. And uh, I know I'm, I'm, people are going to be like, Jay, you're in the middle, what do you mean? You don't hate or love it? You're, you should pick a side. And I'm like, why do I have to pick a side? I just liked some moments and I didn't like others. It's like, just one of those movies. I just didn't really care either way, honestly. But, um... I guess mid is the word I'd use, but again, I liked a lot of the aspects. It's just like, yeah, it's definitely a downgrade. So, potato mice, I'm out. <laughs>